This video will focus on adding multiples of 10 to a two-digit number. When we talk about adding multiples of 10, we are talking about adding a 10 plus a 20 plus a 30 or plus a 40 to a two-digit number. It could also be plus 50 plus 60 and on. You've done this earlier in the year in first grade, and what we're gonna do is we are going to review this. And we're gonna review this so you can start recognizing the pattern again, because it's been a while, because we're gonna take this strategy and we're gonna also use it in the next couple of days to work on subtracting 10 from two digit numbers and from multiples of 10. So when you learned this earlier in the year, you probably worked with a hundreds chart. You probably even got to a point where you didn't even have to look at the hundreds chart, and that's great. We're gonna practice two problems with the hundreds chart as a review, and then we're gonna to try to use the idea of the hundreds chart to answer the last two problems, okay? And then you will try some on your own. So let's just review. The first one we have is 13 plus 10. So 13 plus 10, I'm gonna, I just cut out a little piece of paper and I'm gonna put this at 13, okay? And what you would have done earlier in the year, if I want to add 10, a lot of you started off counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice how I went from 20 to 21, that was eight, nine, 10. So I am now at 23, okay? So 13 plus 10 is 23. So 13 plus 10, we said the sum is 23. An add-in plus an add-in gives us a sum of 23 here. Now, you notice, and when you did this earlier in the year, you notice that as I added a 10, that basically the only digit that changed was the digit in the 10's place. And that you realize that, hey, if I'm adding 10, basically, if I can think of this hundreds chart, I'm basically just basically going down the the chart, even though I'm adding, I'm going down by getting to a larger number, okay? So let's look at another one. What if I have 40 plus 38? Now, I'm looking at that and I know with the commutative property, which means I can change the order of the numbers, I know that if I add 38 or if I think of this as 38 plus 40, I know that um, I can do that and still get the same sum. So that's what I'm gonna do. Even though I see 40 first, I'm gonna start at 38, and then I'm gonna add on the 40, because it's gonna make it easier for me. So once again, I'm gonna come back to my hundreds chart, and I'm going to find 38. A little piece needs to stay over here. All right, I'm going to find 38, which is right here. And if I wanted to add on 40, now remember just a minute ago when we added thir a 13 plus 10, remember we just went down basically one level here to get, the, to get to the sum of 23. So that same pattern is that I'm going to do the same thing here. Instead of having to count 40 ones, I know that this would be plus 10. I know this would be plus 20, this would be plus 30, and this would be plus 40. So 38 plus 40 gives me 78. Once again, you notice as we move down, the only digit that changes is the digit in the tens place. Plus 10, plus 20, plus 30, plus 40. So 40 plus 38, or 38 plus 40, gives us a sum of 78, all right? So we recognize that pattern. So what I want you to do, we're going to imagine envisioning this hundreds board. We're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna think of this hundreds chart or hundreds board in our head. And we're gonna visualize it. And we're gonna visualize that when we are adding 10 or multiples of 10, we're gonna imagine moving down the chart from wherever the number is that we're adding onto, okay? So let's look here. We're gonna start with 81 plus 10 first, okay? So I want you to kind of close your eyes and I want you to picture that hundreds chart you've seen since kindergarten in your head. I want you to find 81 on that hundreds chart, okay? Think of where 81 would be. And if we were to add 10, think back what happened when we added 13 plus 10. The only digit that changed was the digit in the tens place. We went from 13 to 23. So if we're at 81 and we're adding on 10, the only digit that's gonna change is the digit in the tens place. And remember, we're just adding on one 10, so we just are moving down 
one level, which gives us 91. Let's check ourselves. If I am at 81, remember when we did 13 plus 10 is 23, that pattern, 81 plus 10 should give me 91. And if I checked it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, from 90 to 91, 10. Okay? So, 81 plus 10 is 91. So now let's try another one. 20 plus 62. Now remember, with the commutative property, which means I can change the order of the numbers when I'm adding only, only when I'm adding right now, not with subtracting. 62, I can think of it as 62 plus 20, okay? So I want you to kind of close your eyes, and I want you to picture that hundreds chart. Find 62. Now once you find 62, we're gonna add on two tens. So we're at 62, we're gonna add on one 10. Think about where that should land. The only digit that should change is the digit in the tens place. So it goes from 62 to your right at 72. Now you think about it, you're at 72, but we gotta add on two tens. We only added on one 10. We're gonna add on another 10. 72 now becomes what? That's right, it becomes 82. So 20 plus 62, or 62 plus 20 is 82. Let's just check ourselves. If I am at 62, right here, and I'm going to add on two tens. Remember the pattern of 10, just dropping down a level. Plus 10 plus 20 would give me 82, okay? So what you're gonna do, remember this is a review from earlier in the year, and we're gonna use this strategy later on in the week as we start um, subtracting 10 as well in multiples of 10. So you are now going to try some on your own. If you wanna try one or two with the hundreds chart, definitely do that. But then I'd urge you to try some without the hundreds chart, okay? Think about that pattern, close your eyes and think about that pattern there. And then you can go back and check yourself, all right? Good luck.